It is tough to picture a node TypeScript project without environment variables. In this video, find out why you shouldn't use process ENV directly in your code. We'll show you the best ways to handle environment variables safely. You'll get tips and tricks to keep your code clean and easy to manage. Let's talk about process ENV. It is a global object that gets you access to environment variables. Although it is useful, using it directly in your code like I'm doing right now may lead to serious issues. In smaller projects, you may get away with a sprinkling process.env around your code. However, in larger projects, this can get out of hand pretty quickly. A better way is to have a centralized place where you can put your environment variables. This place can be a configuration module. Let's create one. SRC, so we'll put clash config that's yes. And let's put the following code in there, const config. And we're going to have an object here and we can put app debug. And we can do process.env.app debug equals to true, the word true, because environment variables are strings. So if we want to have a Boolean, we need to really compare it to the string that we want to. And finally, let's go ahead and do export default config. Encapsulating your environment variables like that have several advantages. Well, first of all, you have a single source of truth, right? So if a new developer joins the project, uh, they can look at this configuration object and see what environment variables they need to put in their local .env file. You also have an advantage of maintainability. For example, if you decide to change the environment variables from app debug to debug, you don't have to jump around the code and update all the occurrences of app debug to debug. You can just simply update it in your uh, configuration module. Also in configuration module, you can do configuration transformations and assign default. As we've seen right here, right, we actually need app debug to be Boolean and not uh, string, so we are kind of casting it to Boolean by just comparing uh, this value to the word true. And we can also assign default, for example, env, env process dot env dot node env, or the default value can be development. Right? We can also do transformation and assign default value at the same time. For example, port, we can do parse integer and we'll do process dot env that port or we can have string 3000 as you can see you can encapsulate all your logic in a configuration module if you are enjoying this video please like and subscribe to our channel to help youtube recommend it to more viewers with a configuration module, you also get consistency and readability. For example, let's say app debug, it may not be kind of readable. We can just call it debug. And then when we go ahead and use it in the code, we can go ahead and import config from config, right? So we'll do import from dot config. And now instead of process env app debug, we can do config dot, and you can see we have a hinting right here what we can choose, right? That's another advantage. So we'll just put debug in here. And then we don't have to compare it to true. Obviously, we can just delete that. Okay, and our code is way more readable. Another advantage that configuration module gives us is separation of concerns. Your code shouldn't care how your environment variables are retrieved. This logic should be encapsulated in the configuration module. So right here, we're getting database config, right? There is a function, so, and that's where we're getting uh, configuration variable or environment variables for the database. All you have to do now is just to call this function in your code. Finally, configuration module helps us to test easier, right? We can uh, mock our configuration. Let's go ahead and run the test. We'll do npm run test. As you can see, the test is passing. However, we don't see the app debug console log statement because usually environment variables are not imported when you run tests because you may run them in a different environment, let's say on a kind of different server in a GitHub Actions. However, if you would like to use them in your test or maybe debug something, right, to see what's going on, you can easily mock them in your tests. 
let's say when running this test it's failing for some reason and we want to see the debug console log statement we can just do just mock and just get this configuration module and mock out the debug variable and put it to true let's go ahead and run the test again And now you can see the debug console log statement, right? Calling add function with arguments one and two. By avoiding direct use of process.env, you can enhance your code security and maintainability. In the configuration module, in the config object, we also add a property get database config, and it's actually a function. So let's put it to use by connecting to the database using SQLite. So check out this video on how to do that.